sometimes associated with legal matters. Our high standard for client care and concern, coupled with our extensive legal knowledge and skills, make Hampton Law a resource focused on the protection of the client's interest and overall goals. We value our clients and truly enjoy working with them. Visit thamptonlaw.com to conveniently schedule an appointment online. Tamika Hampton Esquire, 1631 Rock Springs Road, Suite 336, Apopka, Florida, 407-494-1471. Thamptonlaw.com. For 200 years, Montgomery, Alabama has been making history by people who had the courage to stand up for change. Today, this riverfront city has been reborn, embracing the past and looking forward to the future. From the National Memorial for Peace and Justice to the stage of the Alabama Shakespeare Festival, this is where history was and is made. We are proud to call Montgomery home, and together, we can be the change. Follow the Black College Sports Network and all of our shows on YouTube. You can find us at MyJBN Online and on all social media at MyBCSN1. Have you had your Earthblend coffee today? At Earthblend Coffee, we take pride in offering you the very best of beans across the world, blended and roasted to perfection giving you superior quality and satisfying and flavorful taste. Experience the world in one cup with Earth Blend Coffee. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and parenting education coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. Follow the Black College Sports Network and all of our shows on YouTube. You can find us at MyJBN Online and on all social media at MyBCSN1. Now you can live in Texas and not have a good red meat blend. Texas Cowboy Dust is designed for steak and other red meats. It's out to be my most popular spice blend, made with onions, peppers, ground mushrooms, pink salt, and other spices. Texas Cowboy Dust also goes great with chicken, pork, vegetables, and has a restaurant quality sheen to gravies and sauces. It's like a loot machine. Going around town, trying to get it down. Vanilla smoked sea salt seasoning is for seafood. The tarragon and fennel bring out the natural sweetness in seafood. I also use it in rice dishes, on yams, asparagus, blueberry pancakes, and believe it or not, chocolate chip cookies. Vanilla smoked sea salt adds a salty and savory component to sweet dishes that create a symphony for the tongue. This is Brian Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show.
Yeah. Well, pleasant good morning to everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the Coles Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. Yours truly, Coles Brown, a special guest co-host, at least for the first 30 minutes of the show, Coach Carlos James, head baseball coach at the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. The guest menu looks like this. Of course, Coach Carlos James joining us right now uh, following uh, Coach Carlos James. And by the way, Coach James is the head baseball coach at the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. Uh, following Coach James will be Coach Otis Hughley Jr. He's the new men's basketball coach at Alabama A&M. He's joining us on today's show. Then in hour number two, Coach Van Petaway joins me as he usually does right here on the Coles Brown show. And then our final guest of today's show, he's a Southern University football commitment, Dupree Fuller Jr. He's a tight end. He is a tremendous talent, athletic, uh, a great get for uh, Southern University. So that's the guest menu. Here's what's trending on the Coles Brown show. Alabama State, the 2022 SWAC Baseball Tournament Champions. Wow. We're going to talk uh, more about that with Coach Carlos James, but, boy, what a what a game. It was a marathon. They defeated uh, Southern University 6-5 uh, to five in 14 innings. Can you believe that? It was like, is anybody going to win the ball game? But we'll get the particulars from Coach Carlos James. And then baseball-related. Kerry Jackson, new head baseball coach at Memphis. That's a, a, a huge, huge announcement that uh, came this past week. Coach James, good morning, sir. How you doing? I'm all right. How you doing? I'm, I'm okay. Um, it was a tough Sunday for me uh, personally. Uh, Southern University, they uh, defeated FAMU in an elimination game to make it to the championship. And then uh, Alabama State, of course, they lost six to five. And then uh, my NBA team, the Miami Heat, winning game six in Boston. And then you have a home game that Sunday, game seven. They dropped that ball game. But you know what, Coach? Life goes on. But if you're a sports fan, you have to be happy all the way, all the way around. Um, with those results. But um, Alabama State, Coach, in a marathon 14-inning game, they were able to defeat Southern University. Kind of get your, your thoughts and perspective on, on, on that, that, that ball game and the tournament itself. You, you know, I, I, I picked them to start the tournament out anyway. When we was talking about that, you are and Charles, um, I actually picked Alabama State this year. Uh, I, I just think it was their turn. It was just their time. You know, Coach Vasquez has done a really good job with with the program over there. Uh, he had a couple of near misses in the, in the last few years. Um, I think uh, the edge was pitching at the end, even though it was a close game. But I, I think the, the, uh, the X factor was uh, Southern losing Xavier Moore. Um, you know, a lot of people don't uh, realize that, but when you lose a guy like Xavier Moore with with his experience and his leadership, you know, just with, with me being around the program and, and seeing him grow and, and just the way the guys responded to him, I think the loss of Xavier Moore may have given Alabama State that one-run edge. And, and Coach, look, looking at the ball game, uh, in my perspective, and I understand what you're saying. Um, you could say missed opportunities for, for both uh, teams. Southern University, bases loaded a couple of times, not able to push more runs across the plate. Alabama State, they could say the same thing. But, um, it, you know, Southern went into their bullpen, which had been kind of shaky. But guess what? Mm -hmm. I, I thought they, they performed admirably. But at the end of the day, Alabama State, it came down to who who produced the runs, and Alabama State were able to produce one more run than Southern University. And uh, many uh, pundits have said this is one of the most uh, historic 
games in the conference because they went to 14 innings. But how about missed opportunities for, for both teams? I guess that's baseball. Yeah, that's just, that just part of the game. I mean, you're going to have your times where you should have should have may have scored or, or, or here or there. You made an error here or there. It's just part of the game. Um, and, and, and that's the beauty of baseball. You know, it's just things like that just happen. But, but you had two teams, you know, you know, fighting it out. And, um, you know, the one team, Alabama State, made the one extra play to win. You know, that's just kind of all to it. But if you're a Southern Jaguar fan, I mean, you've been in the championship last three years. You know, you won two out of three. Mm -hmm. You know, so in this day and age, with, with all the parity, as you saw in the SWAC tournament, you know, a lot of the games were close. You know, and then with the addition of, again, we talk about having Bethune and FAMU in, in the conference, you know, for Southern to go there three straight years in a row and to come away with two titles. I mean, you got to you gotta give them kudos. And then you also got to give a program like Alabama State, which has put a lot of money into that program, you know, and they've had a lot of continuity with their coaching staffs and things like that, that, you know, they deserve to win too, you know. So, um I'm still a proponent, and I've always told people, you're probably not going to have a lot of back-to-back -back champions here in the next probably mm -hmm. five to seven years because there's just going to be so much parity in the conference. That's an interesting point that you make, Coach, because, uh, yeah, di disappointing that, that you know, Southern dropped the decision, but if you look at the in the grand scheme of things, back-to-back uh, -back champions and then make it for a third year in a row, uh, fell a little bit short, but you know, even if you look back in the tournament, uh, they persevered. They they got behind, and and, and several of the games were able to, uh, to to battle back. So the effort was there, and uh, uh, an emotional coach Crin Crenshaw on the local station WBRZ. Uh, they talked to him after the game, and I mean, he he literally lost it. He he, he teared up. He talked about uh, the seniors and you know losing them and. You know, being around the program, it, it was tough. So you can kind of see the emotion. And, and sometimes I think, Coach, in a way we forget that coaches are humans also. I know that sounds, you know, kind of nutty there, but they're humans. They get emotional. And um, they were talking to some of the players. It, it, it really was an emotional time. But the effort was, wow, the effort was there. And so, yeah, yeah you could be disappointed, but you can't be – mad and frustrated with um, what Southern baseball has accomplished. Yeah, you got to also understand they did it with having a transition of coaches. You know, Eric won the first one, uh, and then that transition there, and then you had a pandemic, and they still were on top. You know, so they, they've done, you know, an admiral job, you know, to, to be able to be in the championship many times they had and um you know and I can kind of sympathize with coach Crenshaw you know with his emotion that you know he had a lot of experienced guys that he's losing and you don't know if you're going to ever get you're going to get that chemistry back for a couple of years you know we we see it you know as much as we like to say that every year you know we want to compete for a championship or we're going to do that but you also see that rebuilding period coming at some point too you know and I think Coach Crenshaw actually sees that, like, you know what, we had a run, and then now I got to rebuild this thing because we, we, we are losing a lot of important pieces, you know, that has been the championship games that understand the conference and things like that. So, um, you know, it's, 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 it is emotional. Yeah, it is. And, and I must say again, if I didn't say it, congratulations to Alabama State because they persevered. They, they've been a, a, a consistent model to me, in my humble opinion, as far as what they've been able to accomplish uh, over the years. And then you talked about, again, the impact and the discussions. There have been a lot of discussions about the impact of family and Bethune Cookman. They basically were one game away from, you know, being in, in, in the championship. So we, we, we see the impact. And um, as I, you know, posted on social media, some of the uh, FAMU alums, hey, 
Uh, glad to have you in the conference. We've seen the impact already, and, and they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Not that they have to build themselves, but their, their baseball pedigree, I mean, it, it, it just makes the, the conference stronger, Coach. Yeah, it, it definitely does. Um, and then you got to understand there may be more coming. Hmm. Wait a minute, what, what was that? It may be what? More coming, did you say? There could be more expansion coming to the SWAC. You got to understand, like, right now the last <laughs> hey, it could get better, you know? So Wow. Hey, hey look out. Well, 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 Coach, I'm not asking you to drop a, a nugget there uh, or a bombshell, but um, I, I understand. Yep, expansions. And, um, wow, if you go from 12 teams to – perhaps 14 teams, thus it may have to be someone who has a baseball program. Because I, I say that because a lot of times Tennessee State is mentioned, but to correct me if I'm wrong, Coach, they don't have a baseball program, but that's just, I mean, there are other institutions out there. You're right, the landscape is changing. But you, you got to understand, they, they've had baseball, and they they were successful at baseball when they did have baseball. And then, then Nashville, so that's not too hard to get a baseball team and start a really good baseball team as well with all the talent in that Nashville area. So, hey, it's could get better, which is great for the conference, you know, for the SWAC as a whole. You, you're talking, you know, the the uh, 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 HBCU Super Conference. What? Well, Coach, it seems like you have a twinkle in your eye, but I, I won't put too much emphasis on on that. Um, right. <laughs> it, you know, it, 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 it's going to be interesting. And, and speaking of that, um, Carrick Jackson, you mentioned Nashville. Yes. Um, was Carrick J Jackson, former head baseball coach at Southern University, now the head baseball coach at Memphis. I, personally reached out to him and congratulations to him. What what do you think in your humble opinion the impact of, of, of that hiring at Memphis for Kerry, Coach Kerry Jackson? Best hire of the year right now in college baseball. And one of the better places to be hired at, especially as an African American coach, to be in the city of Memphis. You know, a lot of people don't understand Memphis has a, a, a real rich history you know, of, of baseball, you know, Negro League baseball, black baseball in that area. Um, and and you also have a lot of talent in that area. And then Memphis being the center of the United States, and you got a guy like Carrick is so dynamic that can recruit all around the country. I think that program is going to be really good, really fast. You know, my warning to Memphis is this, you're probably not going to have him too long because he's going to win and some bigger school is going to want him. Uh, because Coach Jackson does a really good job of, of, of wherever he's been. You saw what he did, you know, at Missouri as a recruiting coordinator. They were really good. You know, we ran up against them a couple of times, and I was so glad to see that he wasn't at the game when we beat him, you know, because he can coach, you know. But I figured out that once he wasn't there, we had a chance to win. <laughs> Um, but he, he built that program in Missouri. But since he's been gone, you know, they hadn't made the SEC tournament in, in, in many years, you know. And then, that, then he took the job at Southern, and he quickly, you know, when they was in transition, turned that program around. And the last three years, it's been in the SWAC championship. has won two out of the three last, you know, uh, conference tournament championships. And then he started the MLB Draft League, you know, uh, and then now at Memphis, so Memphis got a steal there. They got a real steal there. So I, I'm, I'm happy to see that. And, it, and anytime you see, you know, for us as coaches, to see another uh, African-American coach get an opportunity at a predominantly white school, and then especially a coach coming from the SWAC, you know, that's huge. You know, so, uh, you know, I, can, I called him and congratulated him as well and uh, hope he does, you know, big things. And, and big things, and, and often we've talked on the show about building relationships. Uh, coach Jackson has a relationship with pretty much the majority of the um, the coaches, if not all of them, 
in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And, and I know Southern University has played them in the three-game series, I believe. Uh, UAPB has played Memphis. So you could probably get to see each team kind of maybe get some games in, in, in the future as long as Coach Carey is there or at least, you know, uh, help otherwise on and off the field. Yeah, we, we usually, because it's so close in proximity to Palm Bluff, it's only like a two-hour drive uh, from Palm Bluff. So we usually play Memphis every year. Um, this year was the first year we, we beat them. <laughs> so I was glad we got a chance to, you know, I wasn't there, but I'm glad our, 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 our team got a chance to win this year. But we'll get to see Coach Jackson probably on a regular basis now uh, with him being so close. I'm busy with Coach Carlos James, head baseball coach at the University of Arkansas, Pine Bluff, Alabama State 2022 SWAC Baseball Tournament Champions. Coach, I got a chance to see um, Alabama State against the University of Tennessee. And um, yeah. when I saw watching, it was 2-0. to zero. Uh, Of course, Tennessee, the number one rated team in, in NCAA baseball and uh, hosting a regional Knoxville. And... Um, you can see why they were able to uh, take a 10 to zero victory over Alabama State. But uh, hey, I've seen a, a few regional games in my lifetime and um, it was just Tennessee was able to pour, pour it on. But the point I started watching it, it, it was two to zero, but um, Alabama State you know, now has a chance against uh, Georgia Tech, I believe an elimination uh, game um, kind of get your thoughts on that that ball game, and then I'll follow up with a lot of times we talk about that experience, you know, of playing in a regional. Um, but I thought Alabama State, despite the score, I, I thought they made a good accounting of themselves, especially early on. Yeah, I, 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 I thought they did well. Um, you know, the first four innings, they were in the ball game. Uh, against the number one team in the country, and and not only they <laughs> Tennessee's the number one team in the country, you got probably about fifteen big leaguers on, there. and uh, for them to hold them down for four innings, you know, was was great. And then you know you can tell you kind of tell Tennessee settled down there, you know, the nerves kind of went away, and then it was like hey bombs away, but but you know Alabama State. You know, they, they really represented the conference well. Uh, I think if they play anybody else other than the number one team in the country, I think they have, a, you know, would have had a better than average chance to win win the game. But when you're playing a team like Tennessee, and, and, and they're odd this year, like I told you, because I played them the last three years, you know, from when they were all freshmen and they grew up. And that's when they are they – are, exceptionally good it's like they're number one and then then it's everybody else this year you know you you, you can you can look at uh the distance between the number one and number two team this year is probably five spots you know because tennessee mm. is just that good they're they got interchangeable parts you know for us in their hidden lineup that they can they can move guys in and out uh just as well but their pitching staff from one to 21 they got 21 legitimate arms on their team, you know, and they Goodness. probably got, like I told you, they probably got about seven or eight guys that's probably going to pitch in the big leagues pretty quick, you know. So, uh, hey, what 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 Alabama State did was was really good against a, a really good team, you know. And they went 51 and seven, you know, during the year. I mean, 50, they was 51. It was 51 and five or something like that going to the SEC SEC tournament and 25 and five overall in the SEC like that's unheard of you know if you win 19 games in the SEC you, you've done really well but they won 25 games man so <laughs> you know Alabama they did well you know, and I'm proud of them um, I'm proud of them as well and then that brings up again we've talked about it a lot of other shows have talked about it, how you can get out of, you know, you win the tournament, you know, it's a one bid league, then you make it to the NCAA tournament. And if you if you just had a, a, a better RPI as far as conference, you, you don't maybe get into playing that, that number one overall 
see. But, uh, Coach, once again, that comes with, uh, you know, out-of-conference scheduling and then having yeah. some success, correct? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it don't. It, it, it's just not out-of-conference scheduling. You know, it goes back to that old point that you and I always make in Charles. It's about finances. It's about finances. Mm-hmm. It's about finances. And you have to get those bottom right now. You got 10. We got a, what, 12-team league right now. And that bottom four, us, Valley, Alcorn, Alabama a and our schools need to put more money into our program so that when we do schedule out of conference games against bigger competition, we have a chance to win. And we have a chance every year to win, compete for a championship because that top eight, they're there already. If you if you took us out of the conference, they probably would have a better RPI rating. You know, so, mm-hmm. and I'm just being honest. You know, and that's, that's just how I am. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you, but I think the conference, if, if, if we want to get better, you're going to have to put money into those bottom four schools to be able to up the the RPI rating because then at that point we'll be able to compete. You know, all of us will be able to compete, you know, and it'll raise the conference profile because we'll start to win some of those games, even if we can start to beat those mid-majors. You know, if we can beat those mid-majors and jump an Ohio Valley or jump uh, uh, AAC or Big South, if we start jumping those schools, then we can get a better draw in the NCAA and may even be able to get not one but the, the, the two teams that play for the SWAC championship maybe the or maybe the regular season champion and then the tournament champion. Well, you know, in, in the last time we spoke, which was, I believe, last week, you, you, you talked about you were going to sit down and uh, have that open, honest uh, discussion with with your AD about uh, putting more resources into the baseball uh, program. And, and I'm sure if you polled or asked every other, the, the eight teams that you said are there, they, they could use more re- resources a, as well. But, um, you know, sit, but I, I understand your point. You, have you have a, a, have you had a, have a date in mind where you're going to sit down and have that frank discussion? Oh, it'll be here in, um, right before the fiscal year starts in the next two weeks. You know, fiscal year starts July 1. Uh, so we'll yeah. have that conversation prior to that, you know, so that we can see and we can get, you know, some type of funds, some something else that we can use. Even if it's just, you know, adding another coach, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's just got to be some type of progress there, you know, for uh, us to be able to be successful. Because if not, then – you know, you just can't can't keep just beating your head over a rock the whole time and, and thinking that you're gonna have success. I mean, we 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 caught lightning in the bottle for about three years, like I told you, and then everybody else figured it out. Like, okay, this is how he's doing this, but we have more resources, and hey, I'm on the bottom. And 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 there's no disrespect to the rest of the coaches in that top eight because they do a phenomenal job. And yes, they they probably do need more more uh, uh, resources as well. But they're at least uh, at a different playing field than what we are, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So, and, and my thing is, I didn't, I didn't just not stop learning how to knowing how to coach. You know what I'm saying? It just it just came down to resources. And and as a yeah, as I get older, I just can't keep beating my head up against that rock like that, you know, because that's frustrating. You know, as a competitor, it's frustrating going out there. Every year you start the year knowing that you're behind the eight ball, you know. So yeah, um, that's something that I have to look at from my, my uh, career to say, hey, you know, this may not be – this may be something I need to walk away from if, if, if I can't get in a situation where, you know, I can play on the level playing field. So, you know, it's just the way it is. Yeah, and, and you know, you, you, I looked at uh, your stadium, and you've been on the show where where you're at the stadium, and uh, it, it it looks nice. But I guess I'm a, I'm gonna put it this way: that's great. It's like buying a new car, but you know, when making that decision, you also have to look at the maintenance. 
And it just sounds like right. that that's what you're talking about. You, you still got to have the maintenance in place resources to maintain the vehicle. And in this case, maintaining the baseball program. So coach, I, under, I understand um, where you, where you're coming from. Yeah. You know, like I always tell you, you know, we got to look, you know, if you look at our stadium and all that, you go, whoa, but we don't have resources to be able to put the players in that stadium or have the continuity in the coaching staff, you know, have, have a coaching staff actually and a recruiting budget to be able to uh, put the product on the field that reflects the stadium. I'm, I'm going to say that. And uh, that's the frustrating gotcha. part right there. And then as you get I, older, I as you. Uh, I think we may have lost uh, Coach James. We'll see if we can uh, get him back because, you know, he he's bringing up a, a tremendous point there about, you know, having the, the, the resources to maintain the program. And, and he's right, absolutely right. Google University of Arkansas Pine Bluff uh, baseball stadium and, and some of the things that they've done in the, in the past few years. But I guess I, when I was going to follow up with him about, um, um, I'm pretty sure that came from outside sources, not exactly from the university. Um, that, I, I lost got you. coach back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me coach? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, I was making the point that if you Google and look at the, the stadium and, and, and all the amenities, it, it's absolutely right. But I, I think if I'm not if I'm not wrong here, a lot of the, that help came from outside the, uh, the the university, right? To get some of those things all of done. Them. All, of all of okay. Them. That answers all that. Oh, all, all, all it's about. Seven, eight million of it, you know, because you had to acquire the land and start to build, and you know how much it costs to build things. And even that that new press box building we got with the locker rooms and all that concession stand that cost us. It started out being like four hundred thousand, and ended up being one point two million. You know, by the time we got to building it, and you know, so things are so expensive. You know, now, uh, so yeah, it was a lot of outside. It was all outside sources you know so you know look for a little inside help or maybe some more outside help you know just some something to say you know what coach we're going to give you some things you need to be successful or mm -hmm. you know how it goes if not you're going to keep losing and they're going to get rid of you then they'll bring somebody else in and get them the things that you always ask for you know so wow. i'm gonna go out I'm, I'm gonna go out on my own terms you know, uh, I understand, you know, Coach. Uh, yeah. yeah, message received loud and, and clear. Um, finally, last week you kind of, uh, and I, I'll share this, Dr. Cavill, my colleague, he was watching in when you uh, talked about tournament expansion. <laughs> For next year, and that was a that was a, a a hot topic. Of course, moving the tournament next year back to New Orleans, and um, right, you know, he always takes the business uh, angle on that. And he said he had to sit down and think about that from a business perspective. But it, it, if you can quickly um, talk about that again for those who maybe didn't see the show last week, uh, the possibility of uh, a swag baseball tournament. Uh, expanding with the number of teams participating. I mean, what it, it makes sense from a business standpoint because if, if I'm a city that's hosting the swag tournament, the, of course, the more teams I get, right? That's the more hotel stays, the more food, the more fans that come to the venue, um, and, and that makes that makes it more uh, advantageous for me to host it over a long period of time. And I think also, I think it helps the conference. It helps those, and I always talk about the four bottom teams, and I know those schools may not like me talking about them being in the bottom, but it is what it is. Um, but it helps us on that bottom half each year out of those four teams, two of us to be able to get in, which would be able to sustain our program 
when we're going out recruiting to say at least, hey, we made the SWAC tournament. But if you say at eight, and then the eight schools that have the most resources, then we'll never get in it. And then all of a sudden, our program is going to start to just deteriorate. Because at that point, then now our uh, administration is going to go, well, y'all not winning anyway, so why should I put any more money in it? You're not even making it to the tournament. You know, so I think it, it's sort of like what the SEC did with revenue sharing. You know, you, you can't just exclude the bottom teams. And your conference is only as good as those bottom teams, point blank period. You know, I, everybody likes to win, and I get that. But you can look at the same thing in football. Look at the same thing in basketball, in the swag. If we don't start to pay attention and start to understand how to make the bottom teams more competitive, then you're going to have a top-heavy league, and then now you can't sell that to ESPN or nobody else because you're just going to have a top-heavy league that's going to always have the same teams uh, buying for a championship, and nobody wants to see that at all anymore. You know, those days of, of just Grambling and Jackson dominating football, those days are over. You know, you can't have that. You cannot have uh, – uh, and, and I know I'm going to get killed for this on social media, but – you may have to look at changing when you have the Bayou Classic because some football teams uh -oh. need to get into the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, like, economically for the conference going forward, you may have to bring it a, a week ahead of time. So now a fam you or somebody that don't make the, the Celebration Bowl or the SWAC Championship can get into the, 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 uh, the playoffs and be able to compete because that's more money for the conference. You know, and the same thing with basketball. You know, it's just it's just things that we have to start to do business better. I know Coach Prime always says it. He says it a lot. But we have to start to look to the future and see how can we do things better in a conference where everybody wins. Everybody has to be able to win. You know, you can't every year like at Valley, you know, like Coach Prime is going to help Valley – on their field like that's a great thing for him but he shouldn't have to do that you know the conference as a whole we should be revenue sharing and things like that so that we can make all the schools great all the schools great in the swag that's just my opinion well, you know, and like i said i make you know, I understand. Sport, but that's how i feel hey people agree or disagree um, i'm looking at it in the chat room um some are saying, no, the quality of play will go down if you add more teams. But look, I think you have to have that discussion. Right. You see what I'm saying, Coach? And um, and boy, now, on that note, think I'm, about it. Go, go ahead. I'm almost out of time here on this segment. Okay, but just think about it. Before the SEC was really good, before they start adding teams, when, when the University of Arkansas came in, and I know this to be a fact because I was in school at the time, that's when uh, Frank Rawls took it to the SEC commissioners and the presidents and said, hey, we should share this money so that all the schools won't be on the bottom. You know, you'll have a, a balance. And that's what the SEC did. They, they wanted the only conference that shares all their revenue. And they, they divided up amongst the schools. So now everybody's good. You know, so, and I'm not saying that we may have to take that model, but we have also have to understand, like, if we want to be where we should be, we got to do business better. We got we to gotta come up with different ideas that's going to make it better for everyone and not just a certain few blue bloods. Well, Coach, I understand. But when you say moving to Bayou Classic, I almost had a heart attack right here on the live show. But um, <laughs> it's, it's, it makes a lot of money. It makes a lot of money for those two schools. But what about the other schools? Hmm. I. Th you know what? I think this. We need to or have a you, more. We need to have a. We have. We need to have a more. Have a, a, a more discussion on this. And what I would like to do is bring someone maybe who feels differently or different about yeah. the situation yeah, of course. And, and just, just have the dialogue. Of course. I, Cause I, I just think like for me, 
I'm not a traditionalist. I think I think we as black people get so caught up in traditions and what I call religion that we don't want to change things to see it may work better. You know, I'm not saying get a, get rid of it because I think it's 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 part of our heritage. You know, and I, and I think those schools benefit well for it. But I think you can to be able to help everyone if you if you maybe tweak it a little bit. It may help other schools be able to go on and do what they need to do or what have you. You know, I just, I just, I mean, look at it, at least look at it. And if it don't work, then okay, that's fine. And if I'm wrong, I'm fine with that too. You know, but just at least look at it and see, could we change it to benefit everyone? That's all I'm saying. Yeah. No. The Bayou Classic. I don't think I mean, it's great. Yeah, that, that, I don't that, think that, that coach, I think that's a, a tough sale. That'll uh, be a tough sale, but but I think there may be other options that we can look at on the table. Again, just, just you know, you guys will have to discuss that, you know, ADs, what have you. Uh, but there may be some alternatives, some other options. But, um, Coach, yeah. hey, I appreciate you coming on and talking about it. And um, let, let's set up a, a, another show where we can – have opposing views and um well i say opposing yeah, we, views but just have a, a discussion yeah i think i think we should have discussions on how do we make the conference better and how can we mm-hmm. keep some tradition but change some things to be able to to bring our conference into the 21st 22nd century whatever you know like how do we make it better, but keep some of our traditions at the same time? Because what we're doing okay. now, obviously, is just not everyone. You know, that's all I'm and, saying. And, right. And this specifically started out talking with, of course, baseball, more resources, uh, the, the teams that are not successful at, at the bottom, and, and then just having more resources for baseball and an investment in baseball, because that is – a sport that has the potential. We've been saying this for like eight years, ten years, that can do well yeah. outside the conference. So now is the time to start really, you know, making those uh, investments. And maybe I need to start getting. Uh, I've got a nice guest list of, of ads, uh, getting them, getting them on, and 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 you know, asking them where they stand on on the baseball program yeah. and how can we. How can we invest and get more investment into the programs? Uh, I'm committed to right. doing that. Well, Coach, I appreciate the time. Um, we'll talk again real soon. Appreciate you. Have a great right. weekend. You too, man. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That was Coach Carlos right. James, head baseball coach of University of Arkansas, Pine Bluff. I'm going to take a timeout. When I come back, boy, that was an interesting discussion. Don't kill the messenger. Just don't kill the messenger. It's always good to have dialogue and uh, open conversation. Coming up next, I'm scheduled to join with Coach Otis Hughley, uh, an impressive resume, the new men's basketball coach at Alabama A&M. Boy, the who's who's. I mean, if you Google and look up his resume, oh, it's just outstanding. But he's scheduled to join me next. You're watching. Carlos Brown Show on the Black College Sports Network. I'll be right back. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids' apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. This is the Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Caville of Dr. Caville's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube Spreaker, or the BCSN app. As we discuss all things about the HBCU sports culture, including exploring the week that was in the sporting HBCU dashboard. 
as well as the upcoming week of HBCU Sports. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU Sports, on Dr. Cavill's Inside HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Watts and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. Follow the Black College Sports Network and all of our shows on YouTube. You can find us at MyJBN Online and on all social media at MyBCSN1. At Hampton Law, our primary goal is to provide non-traditional yet effective solutions and redefine the approach to client legal concerns. As your trusted legal advisor, we believe in sophisticated, personalized services that eliminate the confusion and complexity sometimes associated with legal matters. Our high standard for client care and concern, coupled with our extensive legal knowledge and skills, make Hampton Law a resource focused on the protection of the client's interest and overall goals. We value our clients and truly enjoy working with them. Visit thamptonlaw.com to conveniently yes, schedule an appointment online. Tamika Law? Hampton, Esquire, 1631 Law? Rock Springs Road, Suite 336, Apopka, Florida, 407-494-1471. thamptonlaw.com. Hello? For 200 years, right. Montgomery, Alabama has been making history by people who had the courage to stand up for change. Today, this riverfront city has been reborn, embracing the past and looking forward to the future. From the National Memorial for Peace and Justice to the stage of the Alabama Shakespeare Festival, I saw him, yes. this is where history was and is made. We are proud to call Montgomery home, and together, we can be the change. Follow the Black College Sports Network and all yes. of our shows on YouTube. You can find us at MyJBN Online and on all social media at MyBCSN1. Have you had your Earth Blend coffee today? At Earth Blend Coffee, we take pride in offering you the very best of beans across the world, blended and roasted to perfection, giving you superior quality and satisfying and flavorful taste. Experience the world in one cup with Earth Blend Coffee. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties through its programs Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. <laughs> Welcome back to this week's edition of the Coles Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. Uh, that was a rendition by the Human Jukebox. I always dedicate that to uh, <laughs> Coach Petaway. <laughs> he, loves, <laughs> he loves Southern University in his own special way. Joined by Coach Petaway and our, our second special guest. Boy, and I got his bio right in my hand. Coach Otis Hughley. Junior, Coach, it's still morning. Good morning, guys. Coach Petaway and Coach Hughley. Good morning. Good morning, Carlos. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I guess now is the new men's basketball coach at Alabama and m Coach Otis Hughley, Jr. It would probably take three or four minutes to read the total 
total bio, but just to give you an idea, professional coaching experience, the National Basketball Association, international coaching experience, Nigeria, Spain, and China. As I turn the page, high school coaching career at Lafleur High School from 2004 to 2010. Of course, college coaching experience, coached uh, associate head coach at Southern University under Coach Ben Joe. Coach Petaway, have you were on the committee? <laughs> Just an outstanding, I I believe, outstanding hire in my opinion. Uh, Alabama and M's men basketball coach. Coach Otis Hughley, Jr. Right. I, I, it's a great hire. Uh, being a part of the committee, uh, he, his uh, resume stood out. He stood out. I've been knowing Otis for years, and uh, I, I have full confidence that he'll get the job done. Uh, he's a great motivator. Uh, I think the biggest thing that they'll find out that he teaches the game of basketball, and I think that's what's been missing here. And uh, he'll bring the excitement back, his style of play, his style of coaching. I think it's what our fans are looking for. So I look forward to the season. And so far, everything is uh, that, that he has done has, uh, has shown signs that we are going to have an exciting season. Looking forward to it. Coach Hughley, welcome to the Carlos Brown Show for the first time. Um, coach, now, men's basketball coach, how are you feeling about uh, being the coach and uh, and talk about your family, um, their their excitement of you uh, being the men's basketball coach at Alabama a and I'm really excited. How, do you hear me okay, Carlos? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I'm really excited. My family is certainly excited to have me stay excited. The past 12 years, I've been working on the global, global stage and to be back here at Alabama, man, you say, I'm really, truly excited. Okay, Coach Pettaway, can you hear him pretty well? Yeah, he, he's he's coming in a little, uh, it might be because he's on his iPhone, but yeah, it, it's coming in, but it's not, uh, it's not crisp. But uh, I think what he's trying to tell us is that uh, he's excited about being here, uh, mm -hmm. being a part of the program, and he's hit the ground running. You know, he's been out recruiting. Uh, he's, he's, he's doing things. He's getting his staff together. So I think, uh, I think our fans are going to have a lot, um, a lot to be excited about. Uh, I, and I definitely know that they're going to like the way his teams perform on the floor, their style of play, you know, uh, I, I think the excitement that that our fans were accustomed to in the past, I think they'll see that again, and I think we'll be able to show that by our fans coming coming out. Uh, because uh, over his career, everywhere he's been, uh, he has played an exciting brand of basketball from the high school level on, on up to the level. And then, of course, uh, we know what he's done internationally, both on the men and women's side. So uh, he's well-rounded. I think he has the uh, he he's, he definitely has charisma and he has uh, the the desire to be uh, a great coach. So I think our fans will see that. You'll see that in this team. Yeah, uh, Coach Hughley, can you can you hear me? We, yes, we sir. Got you. Yes, we sir. Got you back. There you go. That that that's much better. Um, talk talk about the style that you would like to bring in. Uh, at Alabama, and then for those who uh, probably don't know much about you, what, what, what do you want to accomplish as far as your style and, and, and what have you at Alabama a and Well, we want to play 94 by 50. We want to really go up and down and play in an organized, chaotic fashion. Well, it's organized for us, but it's chaotic for the opponent. In the, in the, in like, in, 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 in the, in the nature of the way Van Petaway and Coach Ben Job used to play. I think the way the game is organically played in our neighborhoods uh, around the world, where everyone wants to go and be aggressive on both ends and be up and down and not inhibited by, you know, things that doesn't allow folks to display their gifts and who they are in the, in the nature of the, in the context of 
you know, how we want to play. So if you can help kids be who they are naturally in the context of an overarching mission of competing at the highest level, then I think you got a chance to be good as you go on and going forward subsequently. And, and Coach Hughley, your vast experience and, you know, on the international uh, side, collegiate high school, how did that de- help you develop your philosophy as far as what, what you what you want to bring on the basketball court for your teams? Well, it allowed me to fuse together the best of all those worlds. FIBA, it teaches you how to compete against uh, folks who just clog up the lane or make you play in the crowd. The NBA, the pick and roll and being able to space the floor and, and get downhill and to play with automatics. When the defense does this, you do that without calling a set, being able to play within a 20, we're really at 18 second shot clock. So you can get as many shot attempts as possible. And then at the high school level, just being able to fundamentally arm kids with the non-negotiable things of the game on both ends of the floor that they must uh, be able to use on call instinctively, just repetitiously utilizing the fundamentals by making them do those things every day. So it becomes as organic as scratching your nose when it itches. That, you know what, Coach, that's that's very interesting because uh, one of the things I also wanted to discuss uh, with you, you were you were coaching in the conference under the late great Ben Job at, at Southern University. Uh, do you see, and I'm sure you were, even though you were in different areas of coaching, were you able to, you were, you were able to uh, look and see how the conference, conference and the style of basketball is being played. Is Do you see a big difference in the conference, the Southwest Athletic Conference now compared to when you were in the conference, uh, when you were associate head coach at Southern under Coach Ben Job? Is there a big difference or is basketball still fundamentally basketball? Well, when I was in the conference and prior to it, Coach Joe had set a template that tried to emulate when he when he really took uh, Georgia Tech and Bobby Crimmins to task. And then when I was there, uh, Van ran this conference. Now what I see is everyone trying to play the way Coach Petaway played. And Coach Petaway played the way Coach Joe played. Now I want to play the way they both play. People are trying to press more, they're trying to shoot the three more, they're trying to play the full length of the court more, and they're trying to mix up their defenses a lot. I think that's the impact that Coach Petaway had had on this league because folks want to emulate the winner. And Coach uh, Joe set the standard, and then Coach Petaway carried it to a whole nother level and set a new standard everyone else is understanding that that's how you're able to win and everyone's sort of playing that way now that's just wednesday in order to take it another step you're gonna have to do that and more and i think that's what the nba experience and the multiple international experience in tandem with collegiate and high school experience hopefully that's what it'll allow me to do is take it to the 3.0 4.0 level and how how quick you think it'll be an adjustment for your your, your student athletes at Alabama a and to, uh, 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 to adjust to your, your philosophy? Do you look at having a short-term goal and a, a long-term goal, but how quickly you, you think your team will hopefully adjust? Well, it's hard to say at this point. You know, quite naturally, it, it, it takes a minute to build a winner. Um, but our goal is not to just win the swag. We want to compete for the national championship. And I know that's just good speak, but I have an edge. The standard bearer who learned from one of the best, he's right here with me. And his impact and his oversight at every game as a commentator, as a mentor, and as someone that really understands the landscape both on and off the floor, 
man, the edge that I have is immeasurable and it's irreproachable. Man, do you not think I'm not going to uh, be grateful and prayerful and, 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 and I already challenged Coach to let's eat every week. Uh, I'm going to be picking his brain like crazy. Yeah, I, I understand that, Coach. You, you hear that, and um, you know I, I I know Coach Petaway is a is a advocate fisher, so I, I'm sure you guys will have a, a lot of times to uh, to talk and you know have lunch and what have you. Um, Coach, do you have a question for Coach Hughley? Well, yeah, hey, Coach, what do you see your your uh the biggest difference in what you're doing at Alabama A&M and what you all did at uh, Southern University? Well, the, the biggest difference is um, the change of defenses that you did. Uh, coach liked to do that, but Coach, hey, he's going to press you from the bus to the cafeteria. Um, and, and one thing that Coach Petaway did, and we didn't really do as much at Southern because we didn't have the personnel to do it, but coach would have done it, is he, Coach Petaway will find a matchup and he'll exploit it. And he'll put defense in a position where they're never right. If they take her this way, this away, coach is going to counter with that. If they take that away, he's going to counter with this. It's like into an A move that you just, the shot you trust versus the shot you like. You take the shot you trust, and then you develop a counter to that shot. Now, take that a little higher. You get a game plan that you trust. Uh, and then you develop a counter, anticipating how they would defend it, and you give a counter that's polar opposite where they can't be in two places at one time. So you place the defense in a position where they're never right. Coach would always change defenses, you know, at various times. There's really no pattern. ATOs, ATDs, after timeout offense, after timeout defense, he always would put something in that the, the defense probably wasn't ready for. And even if they were, they weren't good enough to stop it. He's still, that's just like not being ready for it. Those are some of the things that we're going to try to employ here as we learn our personnel, we develop our chemistry, and we uncover and unearth what we do best. And that's still an excavation right now because we all knew. And, and speaking of new, me and Coach Petaway, uh, we've, he's discussed on this show about, you know, the transfer portal and, you know, that's a route that a lot of coaches are taking. Then there's the, the I call it the traditional way, recruiting the high school level, getting them in school, help them to get their degree, but also help them become better uh, uh, players and human beings through, uh, you know, four or five years of, of college ball. What is, what, what is your philosophy on that? Will you use a mixture of both, the transfer portal and, uh, you know, recruiting high school talent? Will you have a mixture of both? Or, or what is your stance on, 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 on that, Coach Hughley? Well, from the outset, we'll, we'll definitely have a mixture of both. But I'm real big on recruiting the high school kids, investing, teaching, and learning, and watching those kids develop where you have a core group that you can carry with you for a while. Um, but in this, this climate, in the landscape of college basketball now with NFTs and LIs and guys moving around here and there, you have to have experienced basketball players, experienced student athletes, experienced high character kids that are willing to really, really, really lay it down for each other. So you got to have a mixture, but you do not want to alienate that high school coaching community, AAU coaching community, because I think at some point they're going to go away from the transfer portal. And when they do, if it's not sooner or later, then all those who just totally dependent on the the transfer portal, they got to go back now and not only restore those relationships, maybe have to resurrect them 
because those relationships will virtually be dead. I'm not going to allow my relate. I'm going to grow my relationships during this time and really at least try to get two or three high school kids when we can each year at various positions. When a kid is a junior, then I'll recruit at that position. You know, I'm almost like Herman Boone in that regard. If I recruit a kid, I'll measure 10 times and cut once. It's going to be really unlikely unless that kid just does something really drastic, and hopefully that doesn't happen because we're going to vet very carefully in the beginning. I'm not going to non-renew anybody. When you're with me, you're with me until you graduate. So, and I know that's not a lot of that going on, but that's that puts the pressure on you as a coach to really teach, build relationships, cultivate, you know, as much growth and development and with the kids you select each time and every time. So hopefully the high school kid will, will be you know, very, very, very important to us as we go forward, tandem with junior college transfers, and a transfer portal guy here, a transfer portal guy there, as we see the need, is what we want to grow to. In other words, coach, you're saying you got Right. Um, transfer portal at yeah, all. In other words, you, you got to have some bands. You got to be smart when you, when you go into the transfer portal and you want to balance that off with high school. Uh, athletes and then you know sprinkling some junior uh, college players uh, I, I just wonder coach because that is one of the things now you uh, me and coach Petaway we often discussed on this show about having balance uh, with, with with that and you said something key about building relationships and uh, and that that that's what it's all about um, because every other week I'll come across a parent who's worried you know, they have a student athlete in particular sports and they're, they're concerned about because of the, and you know, look, they keep up with everything that's going on. They're concerned about the transfer reporter. Will their student athlete, their kid have a, have an opportunity. And so I, I'm glad that you, you stated that, Hey, you, you still like to build the old fashioned way. Coach Pedro, isn't that something to say it that way? The old fashioned way, the traditional, traditional way you know, with high school yeah. athletes. So that that's a good right. thing to I say. I think it's still, yeah, there's still a place for the high school af athlete in, in today's game. Uh, you the, the, the key is you got to get the best of the best in order for that kid to be able to come in and help you right away. Uh, I think most coaches have gone to the transfer portal because that kid has already had an experience on the co collegiate level. <clears throat> He's already mm -hmm. uh, learned he or she has already learned how to get up and go to class on their own, uh, do things on their own because, you know, you got to remember in high school, their parents were still there. There was somebody there that was always making sure they were where they were supposed to be. And once you get off into college, you know, that's a new responsibility for a lot of these kids. And, and being able to, uh, to navigate a college campus, do the things that you need to do uh, to be successful, a lot of kids, uh, they fail at that, and that's why that job falls on the, on the, uh, it falls into the coach's lap. Now we, as coaches and our staff, we have to make sure that those athletes are where they, where they need to be, and that's why a lot of the, the uh, collegiate coaches are looking at those, uh, at the portal so hard because you know that they've gotten uh, a kid out of the portal who's already navigated all these things, and it's a little bit easier. You get a more experienced player a lot of times on the court, and then you got a person who has already made that collegiate adjustment. So I think that's why a lot of the coaches look at the portal. But uh, I think it's like what Coach Hughley is saying. You got to have balance. You know, you can go to the portal, but you still need to bring in a couple of kids uh, from the high school level because in order to build a program, you need, you need stability. And you get stability in the high school kids matriculate through your program. So uh, uh, his point is well taken, and uh, that, that, that's also my philosophy. Yeah, you can use the portal, even though the portal was not there when I last coached, but you still had JUCO transfers that you can bring in, 
and you can still bring in kids as transfers. But a lot of times, uh, uh, back in the older days, if a kid was available who could really play and he was transferring, that means that most of the time he had back. And it was then it was a, uh, a matter of whether or not you could deal with what, what took place uh, prior to that kid coming to your place. But this is a this is a new day with that NIL, the transfer portal. Coaches have to not only maintain their rosters, they have to re-recruit their own players at the end of the season because of this, because mm. of uh, the easy access to the portal, because they've changed and relaxed the transfer rules. So uh, my hats off to these coaches that are coaching today because their job is a whole lot harder than it was when I coached. Because most of the time, brought a kid in, that kid wasn't looking to transfer, especially <coughs> if they got playing time. So, uh, with, with the NC2A relaxing the rules, now that gives kids an easier out. And I think in some cases, they make a lot of mistakes now because when you look at over a thousand kids being in the portal every year, and then when when uh, the new season starts or the new school year starts, there are a lot of kids that are still in the portal because they made a mistake. So, so that thing goes both ways. And so the parents, they got to look at it, you know, just because your, your kid hits a, hits a wall uh, during their first year or second year in college, doesn't mean that it's time to jump ship. You know, a lot of times it might be better to work out things and issues where you are than trying to go to a, a, a different place. Yeah, well, you know, it, it, it's interesting as we've talked over the past uh, few months, um, the situation we have now with NIL and transfer uh, portal. Speaking of relationships, Coach Hugley, um, it's always important to build those, um, y- your staff that you, you have with you. Is it completed or are you, you, you going to add any more? Where, where, where are you at as far as just your, your staff? Yeah, it's completed unless we can get somebody to come volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely completed. Um, and there are there are such persons out there. You just got to make sure it's a good fit. Um, and uh, we got we have some really good people. And the biggest thing in this in this industry is you have to have really competent, loyal people. Mm-hmm. They have to be loyal to what you do. And Coach Van really mentioned me in that as well. Um, and that's something that just it's universal in all sports. So having a loyal and a competent staff is really good. I'd rather have loyalty and I can help them in areas that they may have shortcomings in, but you always want to hire people that are strong where you're weak or where you they're strong, where you don't have time to do a certain thing or your position as a head coach doesn't afford you to, to really pay attention to those things as much. So we have people who are very competent in certain areas that can really help us uh, subsequently take this program back to what it was. Visiting with Coach Otis Coach Hugh Petaway Jr. Was, was beating everybody. When Coach Petaway was whooping everybody and, <laughs> and taking their lunch. <laughs> uh, I, you, you know what? I, I, I remember Coach Petaway and his teams coming to the – F.G. Clark Activity Center. Uh, first thing I noticed about Coach Petaway, of course, he knew what he was doing, but his intensity. He was very intense. And uh, what was the guy named? Obi Trotter? Oh, my goodness. I mean, but but it wasn't it wasn't a secret. When you saw Alabama and ms on the schedule, they would come into F.G. Clark Activity Center. I would call it 40 minutes of hell defensively. You know, pressure <laughs> from baseline to baseline, yeah. and you know it was going to be intense. And uh, and uh, boy, Coach Petaway was very intense. I never forget an exchange, and he may not remember this, but um, and I can't think of his name now. I'm having a middle aged moment, but he was on the uh, Southern's uh, staff. I mean, athletic staff, football, baseball. He did everything. Maybe his name's going to come to me, but I- I'm sitting there on courtside and. Uh, he was giving Coach Petaway a, 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 a rough time going into the locker room. And Coach Petaway just turned around and pointed to the scoreboard. 
And that was all I need to hear. Yeah, Alabama and them was winning going into the half. And it was a dog fight the second half. But those, those kind of things, you know, you look at the intensity. With that being said, Coach uh, Hughley, uh, talk about the relationships that you've built with coaches that in the conference that r- right now. I know we talked earlier this week about Coach Sean Woods at Southern University, but uh, what is your uh, – your respect for uh, some of the head basketball coaches in the conference right now? Oh, tremendous respect for everyone in the conference. I know Johnny really well. He recruited one of our kids when we were when I was at LaFleur High School. Um, so I know Johnny, for well, been knowing Johnny for some time. Um, I know the, the rep most. I don't know all the coaches, um, but of course, Sean, you know, he's He's pressing, but like I said, the impact of what Coach Petaway did, the remnants of it is still here. Everyone is trying to do the same because that was their model for winning. That's their reference. And uh, so I think the the health of this league is, 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 is really growing. I think the competitiveness by, by virtue of, uh, you know, the NCAA tournament and all the other postseason play and how each team is representing this league competes beyond. Um, I think it's it's going the right direction. I just hope that we can contribute here at Alabama A&M to that, to that growing health of this conference. Well, I, I'll tell you something else, uh, Coach. Uh, we often talk about uh, the strength of the conference and how it can get better. And it it leads me, brings me to this, the the out-of-conference schedule. I think I heard you earlier saying your goal is not only to win the conference, but to be success beyond that. What can we perhaps look for in the future? I don't want to say next year, uh, this upcoming year, but as far as your philosophy with scheduling uh, out-of-conference games. Well, we, we want to be able to compete with anybody and not just compete. We're going into every game with the mindset of winning. Uh, I went to the junior college in Selma and, you know, I said to them, we would be ranked national. Well, and, you know, they heard it just like you would probably hear it now. And we were. Our, our women were ranked number two in the country and our men were ranked number four in the country. And then the next year we reversed it um, uh, at Selma High, same thing. I'm not a LaFleur High, same thing. We were number one in the country. Uh, number two, number we were basically those seven years as a coach in, a professional coach in China. We took a team that was at the bottom, we finished fourth. Um, I told, um, the team in Nigeria and in China and in Japan that, you know, we would get a gold medal. Well, we got four. They didn't know they had never won a game in world competition. Well, I'm saying it here at Alabama a and There's going to be a team out there with, that's perceived like we are that's going to every year compete for the national championship, go to the Final Four, get in the Sweet 16, be a surprise. If not us, who? Why not us? If not now, when? If not here, where? Why cannot be us? Why can't we have the work ethic and the, the wherewithal and the preparation to be that team? There's no reason why we cannot be. And there's been a pattern by God's favor and by God's grace that for whatever reason, we've always been, you know, my teams have always had that chance to do so. Uh, we were ranked 44th in the world, dropping down to number 70 uh, if we had lost that next game. But we finished number eight in the world, in the World Cup in 2018 with the Nigerian national team. Now they're currently ranked number 14th in the world right now versus all those teams that puts millions and millions of dollars into their program. And FIBA is a a foreign organization from Europe, they don't have any hopes or anticipation of any African team 
being part of that top 20 and power 20 and power five uh, group. But we made it in there because we defeated those people who invest all that money. And that's how college basketball is. It's a difference in money and resource. And, and I'm here to tell you, if you pack as much you know, intangible wealth in your preparation, in your teaching, in your vetting, in your you know, investment, in tandem with whatever other resource you might can bring to bear into these children here at HBCUs. You could be St. Peter's to borrow from something recent. 3.0. 2.0 are national champions, but 3.0 is competing every year for such. So I know that sounds grand. It sounds like something huge and it'll take it'll take some time you know like you said we won't do this tomorrow but that's our goal if you shoot for the moon you fall short you've heard it you'll be among the stars if we shoot for the national championship every year with all we have and we know that the SWAC championship is the road to that end well we got to focus really really hard on winning our home games, getting half of our road games, if not better, and competing in a non-conference schedule that gives you credibility where possibly you can get a, a 14th ranking, a 14 seed or a 15 seed where you don't have to go through play and you can get a nice opponent. But if you have to go the long way like UPS and do it from the bottom up, so be it. We're, we're up to that challenge, you know, mentally emotionally spiritually we just have to get on board with it where we can get our personnel and you know our preparation ready for such an endeavor but that's our overarching goal